uh, Director of Boxing with Duco, Dean Lonergan. Big things happening. Look, we're really excited with what's going on right now with Joseph Parker. Uh, as a number one heavyweight ranked with the IBF and the WBO, Joseph's got two different paths he can go down. Right. Uh, we can either head for the WBO belt if Tyson Fury gets stripped as expected, or uh, we've got the mandatory lined up with Anthony Joshua. So these are very exciting times, and regardless of what happens, Joseph will be fighting for the world title inside the next six months. If, of course, he gets past Alexander Dimitrenko on Saturday night, that's a big deal to us. Let's talk about uh, uh, the uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, so he's not fighting, he's been given 10 days to come up with the goods. Tyson Fury's been uh, put on notice by the WBO to ask what's happening and when will you be back in the ring. If you go to the WBO rules and regulations, which are available online, uh, they clearly state that if the champion has not fought inside nine months, which he hasn't, he's been 11 months since he fought, they can strip him. So uh, there's a lot of pressure coming on from people from all over the world for the sanctioning bodies to strip him. And of course, if Fury's not fighting, the sanctioning bodies don't get the money that they need to keep running. running. So it's a big deal, and I would expect Fury's going to be stripped. Now, let's talk about, about the off the disability allowance, time allowance, uh, 180 days in addition to the 10 days. That's the talk out of uh, the UK. What do you, uh, what's your take on that? I'm not 100% sure what's going on in terms of disability allowance, but if you, if you look at the rules and regulations, he's got nine months to fighter it can be stripped. He's gone 60 days past that already. Maybe he's only got another 60 to go. Time, time will tell. This will unfold how it unfolds, and we'll just wait and see. And it's unfolding quite, quite fast. I mean, uh, last Changing week. by the day. That's right. So, um, more of a possibility of uh, an Auckland uh, defence of the uh, it's a, look, it's a really good question. I think um, we're just going to have to wait and see. You know, because Anthony Joshua was booked to fight on November 26th. Uh, talk was that Joseph Parker was a favoured opponent for that night. Now, all of a sudden, Vladimir Klitschko is. I still think that Joseph Parker will end up fighting in that fight, but only time will tell. Yep. You know, like this uh, opportunity that Andy Ruiz popped up only yesterday, yep. once we understood that, you know, Tyson Fury could be stripped. And it's, to be honest, wouldn't it be fantastic to have a fight here in New Zealand for the World Heavyweight title? So I'm talking with Andy Ruiz's people over the next couple of days, and with any luck, we'll, uh, we'll get the fight here. So time will tell. Now, talk me through the mandatory status, because it seems to me that if, uh, uh, if Joseph Joseph is mandatory to the IBF belt, so what's a guy like Klitschko, uh, you know, jumping the queue? That's a, another great question. Yeah. <laughs> what happens is this, is that on November 9, the IBF will issue a letter to uh, Anthony Joshua's people saying you now have to enter into negotiations and you've got 60 days to come to a deal, or 30 days to come to a deal. If you don't get a deal together, uh, we'll then go to a purse. But in that time, Eddie Hearn can either A, cut a deal with us, or B, um, he can ask for an exemption to fight one fight only in the mandatory period against somebody other than a mandatory contender. Now, if they choose to go down that route, and let's just say they get Klitschko, and the IBF board or committee um, rule that the exemption's fine to be done, what happens is when they sign a contract, both Klitschko and Joshua will sign a contract that says I will fight the IBF mandatory challenger Joseph Parker or whoever it is inside a 120 day period. Right. So it's got to happen within I think four months. Four months. Oh. So uh, whether it, whether Joseph fights for the world title with the IBF uh, on November 26 against Anthony Joshua or the winner of Klitschko versus Joshua, if that fight happens, Joseph will be up in March or, you know, we could be fighting for the world title against Andrew Ruiz. The thing is there's so many options, options. and only time will tell uh, as to what route everything happens. All we can do is line up all the opportunities and pick what's best for Joseph Parker. Now, um, I keep going back to Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn. Um, there seems to be a concerted effort to avoid Joseph Parker. First there was Kubra, Kubra Pulev, uh, and now Klitschko, uh, while Joseph Parker is willing and ready. Look, you're dead right. I don't know so much that they want to avoid Joseph Parker. I think what they want to do is when they fight Joseph, it's the biggest fight it can possibly be. And uh, if you've got guys, two big heavyweights who are fighting and knocking guys out on a regular basis, there was talk that Joseph Parker could be on an Anthony Joshua undercard against maybe David Price yes. to build up the fight. And should you know Joseph get past Price, the fight in March becomes massive for Parker versus Joshua. So I don't think they're avoiding us at all. But I do think um, you know they're just trying to make the fight. They're trying to get the biggest fights together in the world and I can understand that and we're just going to bide our time but in the meantime we're not just going to rely on people to ring us up and say yes it's your turn to fight we're going to explore options as we should and present the best offer to our fighter. Did Lonergan, great talk this morning. Always a pleasure. Thank you.